What's up guys, we're Roland here. This time on 3D Nerd Stop, we're gonna go over the life sensor components. All right guys, so let's talk about the life sensor components. To start with, the two main components in the life sensor are stepper motors. Uh, this is what will raise the life sensor up out of the dome. And this is also what will make the life sensor spin around. So we're going to use stepper motors for that. So here are the stepper motors we're going to use. Um, they're fairly simple. Uh, we'll go over the coding form. It's real easy to code for them. Uh, as you can see, they are not expensive. Um, you will find a link for these down in the description down below, as well as all the other components used in this video. But these are the main ones we'll be talking about today. All right, guys, let's jump over to Arduino real quick. As you can see here, this is our sample code. This is the first set of code we'll write, which will just make a stepper motor move, and then we'll incorporate the stepper motors into our current project um, with everything we did to make the flaps open and close. Okay, so uh, to start with, uh, the stepper motors are pretty simple. There's a little driver board that comes with them, and then you have the stepper motors. The stepper motor plugs into the driver board, the driver board plugs into your Arduino, and it can plug into any of the digital pins so you only need four of them so it can plug into any of the four digital pins okay um, I will link in the description down below a uh, set of videos that explain how stepper motors work and the different ways stepper motors work and uh, the different ways to code for them I chose to code for them with a class library called Excel stepper uh, you will find that the link to that class library in the description down below um, here is where you can get it from all you have to do is come here and download the class library and install it in your Arduino software. Once you have done that, then all you have to do is reference it. And then like I said, you can pick any four pins you want. Um, so I have 0, 1, 2, and 3 is what I'm using on the Arduino board. So I'm using 0, 1, 2, and 3 on the Arduino board. Um, these are then plugged into on these little boards, 0 is plugged into N1, 1 is plugged into N2, 2 is plugged into N3, and 3 is plugged into N4. Okay? Now this is important that you understand these different N1, N2, N3, and N4, because when I define my stepper motor, and I t define my stepper, and I tell it where it's plugged in, okay, I'm telling it I want it to do a full step which in the video they'll explain what, a, what the difference is between a full step and a half step. Um, but I want to do a full step and this is the pins that I'm using. Now as you see I have to put them in in a certain way if I want the stepper motor to act correctly. So it has to be N1, N3, N2, N4 because this is the way the, ste this is the, way the steps are paired inside the motor. So that's just something that will be explained in the video that I have a link for in the description down below. You watch that, it'll explain why it is the way it is. Okay? So it's pretty simple. I uh, define my stepper motor. Then in my setup, I'm going to define the max speed I want the step to go. So I want it to go no faster than 500 steps. Max speed. Uh, acceleration. Uh, what the acceleration is, is that it starts at zero speed and works its way up to 500. So this will work it up really quick instead of it being instantly at 500. If it's instantly at 500, the motor's real jerky. This will let the motor slowly accelerate up and then decelerate down when it reaches the end of its move. Okay, then I'm also telling the stepper motor that its current position is zero. Alright, so it thinks it's on step zero. Okay, inside my loop. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to run to a new position and I'm going to tell it to run to position 1000. So it's going to take 1000 steps and then stop and then run the next command. Now it will not move on to another command the way I have this written. There are ways you can write it to where it'll start doing this and continue running the code. Um, this way the program when it hits this line it will stop until it reaches 1000 which is what I want my code to do. I don't want it to move on to the next step until it's completed the first step. Um, I did this, I have it done this way for reasons when you've got parts moving and they all, all have to be timed. I want one part to finish moving before the next one starts to move. 
So that's why I designed, that's why I'm using this particular method. There are other methods and they're all described in this documentation uh, that you can get off of here on how, how to use different types of steps. Okay, so this is stating that it's going to run to a new position and it's not going to run any more code. It's going to pause on this line until this code is finished. Then it's going to run this line of code and it's going to move back to position zero. And then I'm going to have the stepper run to a new position. It's going to run to 2000. And then it's going to stop again and then it's going to run back to zero. So that's what we're going to have it do just as an example. All right, as you can see, I have power to my setup here and these wires are powering these boards. Um, that's one thing about the boards when I did wire them, I guess I should go over this. They have their own five volt inputs. Um, I believe it's five to 12 volts you can put to these boards. I'm putting five volts to them. I am not running them off the five volts from the Arduino. Um, I am giving them the same five volt power supply that's running the stepper, that running the, sur uh, the, the, the servos, sorry. That's running the servo. So I'm running the same power supply to these motors here, which is on these boards, as the same as the power supply I'm running to this board, which is running all of the servos. Okay? That's just so you know. So I'm giving those a separate power supply, and then I have the four pins going over to the four digital pins over here. So these come on when I give this power. All right, so that being said, we'll come over here again real quick. Uh, we're on COM4 and we're all set. So we've got our Arduino Uno checked and we've got the correct COM port selected. So now we will export this to the Arduino. So it's compiling it and sending it over to Arduino. And when it finishes, as you can see, our stepper motor is moving. It just ran a thousand, stopped, ran back to zero. Stopped, now it's gonna run to 2000. Stop and run back to zero. And now it'll repeat. It's gonna go back to a thousand. Stop and then go back to zero. Now it's gonna stop, repeat, and run back to 2000. So as you can see, that is working. And you can see if you watch these lights down here that these lights blink based on whether or not they have power. So you can see how they speed up and slow down real quick when it comes to a stop and reverses. So that's how we know it's working. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to switch over now to the receiver code. Now, we're not going to change the transmitter code. The transmitter code still has buttons 1, 2, and 3, and it sends a different code for each one of the buttons. Okay, so what we're going to do is in the receiver code, we're going to replace buttons 3 code where button three before used a different combination of the, fl of the flaps opening and closing. We're just going to replace that and we're going to make it have the life sensor pop up, spin around, and then retract. Okay? So in order to do that, the first thing we got to do is we got to come in here to our code. Now, I'm not going to change the very beginning of this code. In fact, I don't have to change anything until I receive where I'm defining the open position and the closed position of the servos because we're having to add a fourth flap that uses a servo to open and close it. Okay, so above the light sensor, there's a flap that opens and closes on a with a servo. So we have servo four added here, which will be the light sensor one, and its position of open and its position of close. Now, right now, I just have it set to the same as three because I haven't installed all of this in the dome yet. I'm still working on finishing it. Uh, hopefully, we'll have that soon in hopefully the next video. Uh, but to continue on, that's the only thing I changed here is I just added these two lines, okay? And then we don't change anything else until we get down here where we're going to start defining the life sensor information. So here's the accelerator stepper class library that we, add, we included. And here we're defining stepper motor one, stepper motor two. So we have stepper motor one, which raises it, and stepper motor two, which spins it around. Okay, so stepper motor one, you have N1, 2, 3, and 4, which is on 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then I have stepper motor two on 4, 5, 6, and 9, because those were the open digital pins I had. Okay, so 7 and 8 were being used by another component. I believe 7 and 8 are being used by the, um, by the transmitter and receiver. Okay. 
So here I'm defining the two steppers. I have stepper one and stepper two. Okay, um, I'm still using the full four wire step and I have them defined the same way. N1, N3, N2, N4. And the same on the bottom one. And then I'm creating a flag that states whether or not the life sensor is up. Okay, this states whether or not the life sensor has been told to move. All right, so we have that, that flag state set. And then we're gonna come down here and the setup, the beginning of it's identical until we get to the stepper setup. Okay, we have stepper motor one, stepper motor two. We have a max speed, I have it set at a thousand right now. I have it set to accelerate very quickly. And I have the same thing for the one that spins around the top. I have it set at a thousand. I have it set to accelerate very quickly. Okay, and then I set both of their current positions to zero because they should be in the closed position right now. At least that's the way that the, the R2D2 is designed is this is to be closed when it starts up. Okay, so we have button press number one. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to open the flaps one at a time. Button press number two is going to open all the flaps all together. Now button, uh, button press number three is going to do something slightly different now. Now we're going to deal with the stepper motors. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if our flag is set to zero. So remember we set the flag up here to start with to zero. So the first time it hits it, it's going to say, okay, is this flag zero? Yes, it is. Okay, so if it's zero, then I want you to open. I want you to run the open pie on the flat four angle off of the board over here. So it's going to move this stepper here and it's going to move it to the open position. Okay, then I'm going to change the flag for the life sensor flap status to be open. So that tells me now that this flap is open on the life sensor status. Okay, so now I have stepper motor one. I'm going to run it to 2048, which means it's going to make one full rev revolution. That's how many steps these stepper motors take for one revolution is 104, is, sorry, 2048. Okay, then it's going to run stepper motor number two and do one full revolution. And then it's going to run backwards one full revolution. And then it's going to run forward one full revolution, then backwards run one full revolution. So it's going to spin all the way around. It's going to spin all the way around, all the way back, all the way around, all the way back. So it's going to act like it's scanning. Okay, and then stepper one is going to retract all the way back down to zero. And then we are going to close the servo motor up here, which we close the flap, and then we're going to say the flap state is closed. We're going to delay for half a second, and then we're going to let the code continue on. So that's what we're going to program it to do. All right, so let's upload this code. So we'll click upload here. So this is uploading everything to the Arduino now. All right, so we'll push button number one. And as we can see, our servos are moving. We'll push one again, and it'll close. We push two, and they all open and they all close. So if we push three, now we open. We're spinning servo one. Now we're spinning servo two. And reverse. Forward. And reverse. Now servo one. Now we're gonna close the flap. Okay? So as you see, we did that. Now, one interesting thing I found is I can push this then if I push like button number two and wait, well that runs its entire process. As you can see the flaps over there open, so it remembered that I had a button press. It's pretty cool that it did that. So you could do stuff like open all the flaps, pop up the sensor, and then tell it to close all the flaps. And when it finishes doing the life sensor process, because the code right now is running the life sensors and it can't see that I've told the other flaps to close yet because it hasn't received it hasn't read that part. But now it receives it and it closes it. Pretty cool, huh guys? Alright guys, so there you go. So that's all we have for this week. Um, like I say, hopefully in the next video um, I will 
have all of the electronics. I'll have these servo motors and the uh, parts installed inside the dome so we can actually see it go up and down. The video will be about assembling all of it, putting it together and in the dome, and then making it work. Thank you all for watching. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, have a great day. Thank you.